to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. One of the things that I was reminded of again is that as believers, we must truly pay the price to host God in experience. It matters that while we worship, you see, when you stand here to worship, it's a revelation of your secret place. You can fake power, not his presence. And so I think, again, it's, it's not enough that we celebrate people who God has helped thus far. We must be determined ourselves that there is value in hosting God. There is value all wise. It pays to really host God. We don't have a message to our generation. Our eloquence will not match that which people already have. Believe me, there are intelligent people. There is a factor that we must present to our world that is more than oratory, that is more than eloquence, that is more than the intelligence and the wisdom of men. The reality of the presence of God that we can host God and tell a generation, look at us and see him. Praise the Lord. And so for me, this is church for me. You see, we're going to be seated shortly, but in Genesis chapter 28, don't turn there. The Bible talks about an encounter that a man called Jacob had with God. That was his first encounter. And he put a stone and lay there to sleep. And the Bible says while he slept, he had a vision. And then from the earth right to the heavens, there was a ladder. Is that correct? And then the Bible says that angels were ascending and descending. And then at the top of it was God himself speaking, revelations coming. And then when Jacob got up, he said, surely the Lord was in this place and I knew not. But that's not the message. He says, this is the house of God, the gate of heaven. Jacob for us defines the conditions for a place to be called the house of God. That there must be a gate from that house to heaven. If there is no portal from that place to the throne room, it cannot be called the house of God. That a place can only be called the house of God when the gate of heaven connects to that place. Hallelujah. Yes. I truly believe lives will never change when we do not host God. I believe we'll be excited. I believe our psychology, our pain will only be managed. I believe our situations will only be, we'll just continue to comfort one another in the flesh. But not when he comes. When he shows up for real, then the songs that we sing become our experiences. And then we walk back with a testament that we met him. Not everybody had to see the God of the mountain. Only one man needed to see him. And the rest only needed to look at the man to have the same experience. Not everybody may be able to climb that mountain. But let me tell you sincerely, if you can pay the price to see his face, then your generation will only need to look at you. Hmm. This is true. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will hear. Oh, speak from your throne and the earth will hear. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will hear. 
my altar is calling you, oh God. My sacrifice is calling you, oh God. Let the fire from the altar touch my body. Let the fire from your altar touch me. Let the fire from your altar touch me. Let the fire from your Let the fire fall. Let the fire from your altar. Let it be a desperate prayer. The fire from the Lord. Spirit of the living God, we have truly come for an experience. Your people have tabernacled for days, feasting on the mysteries of the Spirit. And this morning our hearts are open, we truly are humbled before you except you teach us we cannot learn we can claim to know but until you vet our understanding we cannot trust ourselves and our knowledge and so we cry that in the name of Jesus cause us to eat the hallowed bread of the spirit this morning that our understandings be fruitful and we vow that Jesus will be glorified amen and amen God bless you. Is it alright to just walk to two or three people? Just give them a big hug. Just tell them God bless you. Before we sit. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Pastor, thank you. Thank you so much, your lovely wife. I sincerely appreciate every leader in this place. This is truly truly a global impact church thank you it's not a name it's truly an experience thank you this morning i want to share with us a few things and then we'll pray um i believe that knowledge is very important and then i also believe like i shared yesterday that revelation is useless until it is sequentially arranged we need to know what is responsible for what there are people who got born again and the first sermon they heard was prosperity and that was the reason why they died because they were not told the character of the spirit that can help you manage the reality that comes at that realm it not only matters that you dispense information, they must be sequentially arranged. The same way all of this that make this structure were sequentially arranged to have a structure. You don't put a foundation and then put a zinc on it. That's not a house. So it matters that as we build people, the sequence of spiritual information be supplied so that you see, the truths of scripture were designed to complement themselves. There is something you know that secures what you are about to know. And if, you, if there are gaps in our spiritual understanding, then that becomes the loophole for the devil to access and cause what was given by God to destroy us. The truth can kill. The truth can be used to kill. Just because it is truth does not mean it will liberate. It can be used to kill. Read the Bible and see how truth killed many people because it was misused. It's like a knife. You can hold the knife wrongly and the knife was not designed to kill you, but it can kill you. 
it can injure you. Praise the Lord. Was it not the sons of Sceva that went to attempt casting out a devil? And the Bible tells us the casualty they secured on account of the imbalance in their preparedness. Hallelujah. And so this morning, I, I want to share with us three very powerful principles. We're talking about growth. Yesterday, I began to teach us on the God of systems, that there is a systemic nature to growth and success. Are we together? That when we meet with the Lord, our spiritual experience does not start with principles and, and uh, methodologies. We start with an encounter. But that when we meet the Lord, then he begins to guide us, supplying the requisite knowledge it will take to excel in life. And let me remind us again that I did observe yesterday that our pursuit of God, please you have to get this, that our pursuit of God has no end. We will continue to seek him that even in heaven there is room to come up hither. Are we together? So we will continue to know him. But as far as my success and your success is concerned, there is an exact body of spiritual knowledge allocated for our victory that can be exhausted. Are we together? The belief that the things we need to know to be victorious are infinite is a deception. It's a popular thought but is wrong. There is an exact body of truth allocated for the victory of the saints. We can exhaust that curriculum. Not in our lifetime. In a few meaningful years of useful mentorship. And then now use that light to work practically in dominion. Dominion is not an impartation. There's no place in scripture where there was an impartation for dominion. Dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending this body of truth. The Bible calls it marvelous light. Marvelous light. Not just light. Marvelous light. That is on account of this marvelous light that in experience we show that we are a chosen people. That we are a royal priesthood that we've been called forth. There were many lights but he said he made two great lights. One to rule the day and then the other. To rule the night so when we come in conferences like this is is a feast of mysteries supplying by the spirit the truths that it will take the exact truth they are not suggestions they are not opinions they are not perspectives it is the truth backed up by God's integrity and when you find it he says they are life to those who find them it's not an information to those who find them it's an information to those who know them, but it is life to those who find them. Are we blessed this morning? And so it matters that believers, you see, I will continue to reiterate that spiritual growth has exact indices, pastor. You cannot just say you are growing imaginarily. You cannot even say you are growing just because you are in church. There are exact biblical indices to measure spiritual growth. Number one, very quickly I'll give to you, is your degree of conformity to the image and the character of the Christ. It is the first biblical index to measure growth. The degree to which I conform to the image and the character of the Christ in experience. He says, my little children, the apostle speaking, of whom I travail until Christ be formed. That formation of Christ is growth. And then number two, the depth of your understanding, your comprehending the mysteries and the secrets of the kingdom. It's very important. Your growth is also measured by the vastness and the stability of your spiritual understanding. Your ability to be unperturbed by life in experience on the strength of the truths that you know that can be proven in the face of real situations. There are many spiritual information that we have that are very useless to our Christian experience. And we must allow the Holy Spirit guide our understanding. That's why when Jesus was speaking, he says, I have many things to tell you, he says, but ye cannot bear them now. 
And then he says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he says he will guide you into all truth. The realm of the spirit is a vast realm containing different information and not many of them are useful as far as our dispensation is concerned. We must be guided by the spirit of God to acquire only the information that will cause us to walk practically in dominion and to reveal the Christ. If you're blessed this morning, please say amen. amen. Hallelujah. The systemic nature of God brings predictability to your success. That means that you can know that what God has given me will be kept. Retention, the ability to retain anything is through power. More than having it, retention is proof of mastery. Whatever you have that you cannot keep, you did not get by understanding. Jesus was speaking in John 17. He says, all that you have given me, I have kept. You gave me, but I kept it. All that you have given me, I have kept. And none is lost except the son of perdition. And this that scripture may be fulfilled. Jesus was giving an explanation as to why Judas was lost. It was not a proof of my incompetence. It was to fulfill scripture. When he gives you anything you cannot keep, it was not gotten by understanding. Praise the name of the Lord. And so I'm going to be sharing with us according to Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11. The mysteries of the kingdom. These are the truths by which we reign. Jesus spent time teaching the disciples on what he called the mysteries of the kingdom. Can we read together? It's projected one to read, please. He answered and said unto them, Aha, uh -huh, because it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Please say after me, mysteries. There's nothing mystic about mysteries. They are simply hidden truths. Desire to be unfolded, but privy to a family of people. You have to understand this. I always would give this analogy. Pastor, if I come to your house, for instance, by reason of relationship with your dear wife, there is a way you can communicate to her without my knowing. And say, bring the wine, the red one. And I don't see your mouth moving, but she understands. It's called mysteries. And all those communication is flying all over my head and I cannot even understand. All I know is we were gisting. And the body languages, the eye signals are all coded languages. And so in the kingdom, we have a body of information allocated only for the saints. It is based on the excellency of this dimension of wisdom that we will dumbfound principalities and powers. Are we together now? The Bible says to be revealed to creation, the multifaceted wisdom of God. For instance, in the kingdom, it is, it is unusual to own things. When you own things in the kingdom, you are a rebel. We don't own things in the kingdom. We are only stewards. Owners in this kingdom are rebels. You may freely eat, but it's not yours. When he gave unto one five talent and two and one, he came back as the owner. They were stewards. And the Bible says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. So the consciousness that you do not own anything already disengages you. It's impossible for affinity, lost, to grip your life when you don't own things. And then the responsibility of maintenance, you are relieved. The owner is mandated to take care of his estate. So it immediately heals you of several pressures. Just this revelation alone is therapeutic. So that child is not really my child. That child came from heaven through me. Abba, maintain your child. Let the resources pass through me. Then he becomes responsible. It is, it is difficult to own things. You don't fear the economy when you are not the maintainer and the sustainer of things. Let's touch on three principles. 
Just help those under the anointing of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So I'm going to be sharing with you three very powerful principles. I believe with all my heart. You see, I came from a very interesting background. My grandfather was the founding fathers of one of the great denominations in the north. Um, and so I came from a very solid Christian background. I didn't have the opportunity to do many things. It was God all the way, straight up. But then there were many things that I saw and discerned as God began to prepare to use me that I knew were not correct. The gap in our spiritual understanding the many propositions that could not be defended. I heard preachers say many things about God that could not be defended. We sang songs, we made proclamations, we made boastful statements. We claimed the nearness of God, but our results showed that he was far from us. And so that bothered me for a while. I didn't want to be a preacher. I wanted to be someone who would be a witness, a demonstrator of the reality of God to a generation and that still is my pursuit I only found out that preaching is one of the routes that makes that happen and so I, I every time I have the privilege by God's spirit to minister to God's people I truly am careful the information that I give people because I have a conscience that will be vetted by God himself I cannot supply an information that may just be right it must be truthful and so I found a way to vet my revelations by making myself the first guinea pig to every truth that comes from heaven the things that I want to share with you I submit to you in the name of the Lord and I don't mean to insult your intelligence like I observed yesterday this is a collection of a very enlightened people and by no means am I trying to downplay your intellectual investments. But when it has to do with spiritual things, it is important to understand that flesh and blood cannot reveal this to you. It says, who do men say that I am? And he says, I know who thou art. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus replies Peter and says, flesh and blood there are realms of revelation that are not within the confines of flesh and blood you must route it from a dimension higher than science higher than intellect it will make use of science it will make use of intellect but it does not come from there hallelujah the first spiritual principle that I want to share this morning is called the law of the mind mighty God the law of the mind Psalm 78 and verse 41 I'll be as fast as I can so that we are done in good time Psalm 78 and verse 41 please read for me if you are if you can see it one to read yeah they turned back and tempted God uh-huh and limited the holy one of israel for many years i read this scripture and it disturbed me that a man can limit god that is a statement that doesn't sound correct until i found out this principle and this spiritual law that i teach you that a possibility exists in this kingdom where men can limit god are we together although heaven is his throne the earth his footstool where can a man hide from his presence the psalmist said but that there is something a man can do in the earth that can limit the god of the universe and make him look as though powerless i found the cure for my limitations in this revelation i found out that my experience is not a reflection of god's power the lack of results that come in my life and remain in my life are not proof of god's incompetence that there is something about my in understanding and on and lack of knowledge that can cause the most high to be limited they limited the holy one of israel the law of the mind please write it down
everything in life is built twice to last it must first be built in the realm of the spirit and then built physically that anything that does not have a foundation in the realm of the spirit and ever appears physical will have to disappear it's a spiritual law and so God designed man now I've heard all kinds of teachings that man is a spirit he is a soul and is a body well I agree but I disagree I thoroughly disagree no man is tripartite in operation but man is not tripartite man is a spirit that spirit lives in a body but that spirit cannot operate with the body because they are in two different dimensions and so there has to be a system of connecting both dimensions and god created an agency called a mind are we together to interface the realm of the spirit and the physical realm that becomes the system of connection between the spirit and the body. So it gives that man duality of realms. That means he can relate in the realm of the spirit and the physical realm. So man is a spirit. That spirit is hosted in a container called the body. And given the mind containing the will, emotions and intellect to be able. These are faculties of expression. Are we together? So the spirit can only relate with the body through the mind. The only gateway to the body, to this realm, is the mind. The soul is simply a spirit that is conscious because of the mind. So you don't separate man into spirit. Standing one side, soul. Stand one side, body. Stand one side. No, it's already confusing. Where, what realm does that soul belong to? Because there are only two realms, the spiritual and the physical. Now you are creating three entities. That's where the confusion comes from. The soul is still spirit. Only with an advantage of a faculty of expression to help it relate with the earth realm. Are we together on that? Now it is very important because most Christians have not learned how to convert and transport spiritual realities from the realm of the spirit to this realm. Hebrews chapter 11 tells us now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It says it is the tangibility, the evidence of things not seen. It says for by it the elders obtained a good report. Verse 3 says through faith we understand. Look at this scripture. That the walls, the systems were framed they had their tangibility by the word of god but the technology is that the things that were seen came from the things which do not appear that, that's where i'm driving at are we together now so that things that are seen are derived from things that are unseen 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 not unreal unseen unseen by the optical eyes unseen by a dimension not unreal are we together now that means everything that we require is already a reality the fact that you can desire it means it exists please listen you do not have the ability to desire anything that does not exist so the concept of creation is only creation from this realm from the realm of the spirit is only a technology of transportation transporting spiritual realities from a dimension that is not earthly to give it frame in the earth realm are we together you have to understand what i'm teaching because this is how your wealth will come this is how your increase will come this is how the visions that you are seeing will find expression the law of the mind that realities are first formed in that realm of the mind before they find expression in the physical are we together that your life is akin to a mirror and everything you see in the physical is like a mirror you don't remove something from your head by putting your hand in the mirror you correct it here and the mirror correct itself 
That means our approach to growth has largely been wrong. We attempt to change things physically. And like I told you that there is a law that everything that comes to your life is a reflection of what is already in your mind. This is powerful and this is true. I used two people yesterday. Can I use them again? Any two gentlemen? Please, not, not our, our ministers. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Please stand here. Please stand here. I, I like to use this example because I want you to understand. Please look up. Let's call this guy a preacher. Everybody say pastor. God forbid in Jesus' name. Huh? Let's call this guy an arm robber. Now, just call it in your mind. Don't, don't speak it. Are we together? Now, watch this. This guy is busy robbing people, destroying people's destinies, jumping the fence, doing all kinds of things. And we call him a robber. And then this guy is liberating people, causing people to know the things of God, and you call him a pastor. Remember, you hate this guy, and then you love this guy, correct? Now, walk with me. Let both of them suddenly be dead bodies. Suddenly, the preacher dies, this man dies. Who is on the ground? A dead body? No. Who is on the ground? A dead body. You don't call it a preacher dead body. You call it a dead body. You don't call it an armed robber dead body. You call it a dead body. Now they have become equal. Dead bodies. So who was really the preacher? Was it the body? The mind. A madman still has a spirit. But why is he not useful to you? Because the madness hijacked the interface that makes for sanity between the realm of the spirit. Is why when Jesus saw madness, it, it, he knew that that madness was a serious, he was not just a miracle worker. He was a statement that Satan would come and interface the bridge between the realm of the spirit and this realm. That means I do not have to do anything to your physical body. Whatever can cause me to stand and hijack the delivery system from the realm of the spirit to this realm, I have destroyed you. Eventually, it will be the same thing as cutting the supply of water from a plant. It will root out. Your body will show that your mind died since. Are we together? Now, the mind, the body does not have a will on its own. It's a vehicle of execution. Please understand this. That means if this guy robs this guy, the body only obeyed an instruction coming from the mind. Are we together? That means the foolish decisions that many of us take, the body is innocent. The body is obedient. So we have to correct the giver of that instruction. So that your physical reality now begins to subscribe to a new intelligence. Are we together now? When this guy stands to preach, when this guy stands to minister, the body is only an executor. The preacher is in the mind. So who is really poor? Don't talk. And who is really rich? Who is really educated and who is really dull? Who is really broken and who is really healed? It's deception to focus on this physical realm. Again, let me give another example, respectfully so. Have you seen someone who you gave a nice shirt, wonderful shirt, white, just like what a dear pastor is putting on and you gave that person that shirt and in 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 two months i mean that whole thing i'd be you are it's not brown it's not white have you seen those kind of things now let me tell you what happened the the shirt is reflecting the health of the mind are we together and when you gave it to another person the shirt started looking like what is in there please listen to me very truthfully that your mind is very powerful. The Bible calls it the salvation of your soul. 
that the end of your faith transformation through the renewal of the mind is the culmination of your faith experience that means your being born again is not complete until there is a system of transformation that permits this mind to be in you which was also in Christ Jesus he was speaking to a people who were already saved the impact of your spirit is wonderful but you will still live a useless life until the reality of that transformation finds expression the bible doesn't talk so much about the body because the body is an executor are we together now the real miracle is the mind is god speaking to us genesis chapter 11 please Genesis chapter 11. The Bible talks about a man called Nimrod, the son of Cush. And then the Bible says that he led a group of people to build a city and a tower whose top will reach the heavens. Correct? Now, this morning, I'm not arguing about the theological, the whole debate, whether it was a spiritual building or physical. We know there was a building. And there is a morale there. Let's go to verse 4, please. Or verse 3. Let's start from verse 3. Genesis 11, please, and verse 3 someone is changing and they said to one another goto let us make brick and burn them thoroughly and they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar verse 4 and they said now listen they've not started the building nimrod kush is proposing like a manifesto gentlemen let's come together and build something that will reach the heavens and he says, whose top may reach unto the heavens, let us make a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. If you're a Christian, look at verse 5. One, two, read with me, please. Keep it at verse 5. While they were discussing, God was seeing a building rising. And God said, who is building? God saw that the construction had finished. It's in your Bible. They had not laid one physical block, but in the realm of the spirit, as their minds were receiving it, what God was seeing is a structure finished. The Bible says God came down. Remember, Satan is not in this scripture. The Holy Ghost is not in this scripture. Only men and the power of the minds he gave them. I show you how you can build that business. Because when God talks to you, he talks like he's talking to himself. He will tell you, take over Lagos. And as he's talking to you, you don't know that he's giving you Lagos already. But the technology to make it real is what I show you. Please keep that scripture there. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built dead. Finished. Done. You argue with that? Let's go to the next verse. Verse 6. Here is God testifying. Ready? Please read. <laughs> And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and all have one language. Now listen, and this they begin to do. Stop. Now he's talking to their realm. I saw that the people is one, and they are about to do what was finished. And now nothing, nothing will be restrained from them which they have. Talk to me. So the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, please give it to us. It says, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far above all we or think. Now listen, ask or think, ask or think. If I say sit here or here, it means either way carries equal value. That means there are two prayer warriors in your life. Your mind and your mouth are both praying. That God is a listener to two dimensions of prayer request. The one that comes from your lips change my life. And the one your mind says, don't bother again, Lord, I'm comfortable. Is saying that God is able to do whatever they are saying. Were you ever taught that your mind is a prayer warrior? That it consistently sends requests about your destiny to the throne can do above all we ask not and think or think so could your situation be an answered prayer 
Is it possible that the lack of growth is God honoring you? For the several requests that continue to go from your mind to heaven, keep us this way, oh God. And he says, I gave you a will and I must honor it. Your mouth says, I'm rising. But your mind says, it's all right. Just, I changed my mind. Are we together? They limited the Holy One. They limited the Holy One. The Holy One wanting to reveal his multifaceted possibilities. But the channel that gives him expression to the earth realm was limited by a man's understanding. This is very powerful. Believers hear me. Many spiritual people will never succeed because of this simple reason. Success is not really in doing. Success is attracted by the transition that happens in your mind, which is a reflection of what you are becoming. Every realm of spiritual understanding and mental development has possibilities that accrue to that realm. An attempt to attract a reality that is higher than your mental level is only like pulling a rubber ring. It will go back. That's why many of our results are short-lived. They did not come with growth. They only came with desire and sometimes ego. If you have 200 members and there are 1,000 members here, it's impossible for them to remain 200. They must match. It's a law. Not invented by science invented and maintained by God's own integrity show me a man who stays in one tiny room with no privilege let your mind you see the beautiful thing is that you don't need a visa to travel here you don't need to go to any consular office you can dream with God and he takes you to that realm this is the technology of growth the Holy Ghost takes your mind to your future. The moment your mind gets there, it comes and takes your body to go and join it. So anywhere, listen, when you stop moving, it's because your mind stopped traveling. Please believe what I'm telling you. Realities are first Fear a man who has arrived in his mind. Because God testifying said no power in existence sustains the ability to stop such a man. Could that man be you this morning? Who has gone with God to dimensions. I know that it looks like nothing good can come out of Nazareth. I know as it is right now, there's no testimony. Hmm. Nathaniel said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Jesus at age 12 was in the temple traveling, traveling, the word traveling. Please listen to me. If you're a businessman here, this is a very powerful secret. It will never come just by trying to, you know, do a lot of physical things. Leave all of that. You don't need to be embarrassed that you cannot buy the shoe now. There's no shame there. Anybody who laughs at you is ignorant and they do not understand the power of transition that comes in life. Why fake what can be real? Stay and travel with God and watch him lift you, sometimes overnight. Is God speaking to us? Any successful person who is very honest and open with you will tell you that once upon a time they never, they, they did not know how this will happen. All they knew was that God said it and I believe it and he begins to indoctrinate their understanding. That's why he shows you dreams because we think in pictures. When your mind captures it, it's impossible for you to leave it. So whilst you are sitting here, he shows you the nations watching you minister watching your products go beyond the shores of this country and africa and while he's doing that you don't know anybody while he's doing that not even your neighbor is interested in what you offer don't mind your neighbor he doesn't hate you he's only ignorant finish your business with god 
And I tell you, a generation will stand as attention to honor the God. See, please listen, listen, listen. Believe what I'm telling you and you stop being angry at your environment. The real secret of success is you and God. Not what you do, who you are. What you do will continue to become who you are. That's why promotion never blesses people sustainably. They grow. I'm, I'm not insulting you. A lot of people say once I'm promoted, then they are promoted and then nothing really happens. Then they change a job, nothing really happens. Because the law is that it will always reflect you. But grow here. Leave the chains around you. Just keep growing. And you watch the power of the laws of the spirit. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Is there any chain that can hold a man who has grown out here? If I capture your hands and I lock you in prison and you are Mandela, even after 20 years, you are a president. A president is a president and you will come out and truly be it. So when they took the body of Joseph to the prison, they didn't know that it was only the body that was there. The mind continued to dream. I'm a savior. I'm a lifter. This is the cure for the anger that we have about our background. Why did my mother marry my father? Did she see him? All of that, that, that is not only sinful, it's unnecessary. Are we together? There is a bailout system. One simple law. Dream with God. That whilst you are standing here, I may not have the transport to go back, but I'm not ashamed. Listen, don't rush where you are. You will miss where you are living today. A day will come, you will turn back. If you ever tell people you were here, they would not believe you. Or enjoy the process with honor while you move because you know inevitably you're on your way going. Oh yes, yes, it's true, it's true, it's true, it's true that men can change, it's true that transitions and translations are still real, it is true that people continue to upgrade to higher versions of themselves, don't be ashamed of your pain, don't be ashamed of the bills, don't be ashamed of the tears, if you need to cry, cry, cry while your mind travels, because it's about to pick your body. Some of you, while you are sitting in this conference, just right now, your mind has already gotten there and is holding your body. No power, hear me. There is no divination and no enchantment that sustains the ability to keep a man down who has gone up. These are the justice systems of God. It is proof that he is just and one Lord who is rich unto all. I can find my way out of life. It may not be a cause that your mother didn't go to school. It is not a cause that your father was not educated. It's, it's not a cause that out of 12 siblings you are the first to ever rise. He takes you here while they laugh. Yes, Jesus died, but he only died for three days. He didn't die forever. While they were laughing at the dead Jesus, a newer version was already up. The same way they laugh at you, he said, rejoice not over me, my enemies. I know I came to Lagos and you met me under the bridge last week. Last week is not today. Oh, I'm in a conference. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again
Bye.